I would say if you spend any time wondering where your files are at, like where your clients are at in the process, that's a red flag. You should know exactly where every single one of your clients are at, what you need to do next to keep it moving forward. Um, that is a huge, huge thing. podcast. I'm Jenny Woon. I have Jessica Fregon. She is the CEO and founder of Project Love. And um, I'm going to let her introduce herself, but I wanted to just mention the reason why I wanted you to be on this podcast, Jessica, is because I felt your presentation with the real estate board was super amazing and I learned so much from from it and I want you to introduce your services and offerings to our listeners. So uh, welcome Jessica to our show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in to the real estate board event and for the kind words. I'm so happy that it was something that truly resonated with everyone tuning in and everyone seemed really excited about all the information that I was sharing, which was really, really nice to hear um, because I definitely want to be able to help entrepreneurs make their businesses easier, make it fun for them, like reduce the overwhelm, the stress, um, the long hours, the, the chaotic <laughs> like the chaotic mess that it can sometimes be. So it was really nice to be able to help them in that way. Yeah, we're excited to have you on and and dive deep into some of the tips that you can offer our listeners. But first off, I always have an icebreaker question for all our guests, and it's it's typically the same question. And my question to to break the ice here is, what is your spirit animal? Oh, gosh. The first one that comes to mind, honestly, is elephant. (laughs) (laughs) Elephants have a good memory. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely have a very good memory. I, I kind of use that in basically everything that I do. Um, it, bas- it helps me stay on top of everything because I definitely have a lot going on in my life. Um, yeah. Let's chat more about good. that. Tell us what you do and how you started in this business. Okay. So I do have a corporate job. I am a director of operations for a sales organization. Um, This is a side hustle of mine. Eventually it'll go full time um, when I'm ready and when I choose it to be the right time for that. Um, I thoroughly enjoy my corporate job, so I'm not quite ready to let that go just yet. Um, (laughs) um, So yes, the director of operations during the day for a sales organization where I help run the ops for the entire team, I systematized um, run the systems aspects for the team to make sure that everybody's basically doing the same consistent quality um, process across the board throughout. Um, So I have a team there as well that supports the sales advisors. Um, And then for my corporate job, or sorry, my side hustle, um, it's basically Project Love, and that has pivoted quite a few times throughout the last five, six years to get me to this point. Um, I had no idea at the beginning what I wanted to do. I just had to start something. I had to um, kind of turn my attention into like a passion project. Um, From there, it kind of evolved and pivoted along the way as I realized Um, This was something that I really enjoyed and that I wanted to dive into further. And it's funny because a lot of the times entrepreneurs, when they're starting their businesses, they're not quite clear on exactly what they want to do. It's it's a lot of kind of trial and error and whatnot. And a lot of the times they're like, they try to help you find your niche. What are you really good at? You know, what do you really, really want to do? And this whole time, what I really, really am passionate about and what I really want to do was right in front of me the entire time. That sounds so fun. (laughs) Who are your primary clients then? Um, Surprisingly, it's been real estate, which I never thought would be an industry that I would tap into. Um, 
which I'm super thankful about because I, I find it extremely fascinating and it's just so incredible to see what you guys do. And I didn't have a thorough understanding of what real estate agents do and how important their roles are. But after working with clients, I'm just like, wow, like the amount of work that's involved in the buying and the selling transactions and what you guys are involved in is just incredible. And you, you definitely deserve major kudos for the roles that you have in people's lives and finding their new homes, selling their homes. Um, it's mm -hmm. a huge job. We're definitely wearing like different hats as you probably have um, seen. And so what do you see as one of the top or maybe top three common struggles that agents face in their business? From what I've seen, being overwhelmed, scattered a little bit, um, disorganized, stressed out, like staying up at night, kind of wondering, what do I have to do tomorrow? Kind of where is this client at? What What's left? Did I miss something there? Just feeling kind of like disorganized in a way. Um, not having systems in place to support them, to be able to really rely on something, to keep them on track with their clients, to make sure that nothing gets missed along the way. Because as you know, with real estate, there are a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of things that you really just can't miss, right? It could really impact the um, your clients. And then just knowing where the client is at, providing that quality client experience to make sure that your clients know exactly where things are at throughout the process, what's expected of them, what they can expect from you, kind of also for them to develop that kind of appreciation and understanding of how much an agent is supporting them in the process as well, um, I think is areas that they kind of struggle with. Mm. At what point, I mean, I feel like no matter where, because every transaction is so different and, and the day-to-days, there's, there's so many things that we're managing. At what point do agents feel, like what are some of the hints that, that we should be seeing um, in front of us when we've like hit a, hit a brick wall or when there's a bottleneck? Like we're, how do we know when, because we're in it so much, we don't actually know it's actually chaotic. Right. Mm -hmm. So at, at what point or what type of hints should we or red flags or signals should we should we be seeing or like acknowledging? I would say if you spend any time wondering where your files are at, like where your clients are at in the process, that's a red flag. You should know exactly where every single one of your clients are at, what you need to do next to keep it moving forward. Um, that is a huge, huge thing, a huge red flag that you should pay attention to because it's going to, the brain power that you're probably wasting on trying to keep up with that mentally is taking away from you being able to focus on taking on more clients or money-making activities, those types of things. Um, another red flag would be, I would probably say just general overwhelm, just not enjoying their job is just it's not something fun anymore um they just feel stressed out all the time they're working long hours um they don't have a lot of balance between work and life anymore and it's really starting to impact their relationships that's a huge red flag where you should be like okay i, I need to pause i need to reevaluate where i'm at and determine exactly what i can do or what i can implement into my business that's going to stop that from happening because work isn't life, right? <laughs> you gotta have a life outside. No, of work. yeah, yeah. And absolutely. so, when these obviously these are a, a lot of red flags and, and things that we should be looking for, as you mentioned, and mm -hmm. and what are some of the benefits and changes that you've seen happen once agents implement businesses into their company? So with that, it's a huge sense of relief. One, you don't have to worry about figuring out what you need to do next. You don't need to have 10 billion post-its all over the place telling you kind of things of where they're at, like one session for one client and like a whole bunch of post-its there. You don't have to um, worry about missing things anymore. So there's a huge sense of relief knowing that you have a system in place that's going to tell you exactly what you need to do and when. Um, another thing is 
just satisfaction and knowing that they're providing a quality client experience to all of their clients all the time. Um, another one would be just meet, achieving their goals, right? So turning leads into active clients. Um, so that could be through creating like a client or a lead nurturing sequence or a program um, that really drives value and delivers value to build their authority, their expertise with leads, and then it entices them to want to work with them. Mm. So beneficial to, mm -hmm. to add these systems into your life. Um, you talked about this Project Love as your passion project. You also have your own podcast. Mm -hmm. Love Unplugged. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about Love Unplugged? You're, you're about 136 plus episodes now. What, um, what do you talk about on your podcast? So that's evolved quite a bit throughout the pivots, um, but mostly I have entrepreneurs join me on the podcast to share their entrepreneurial journeys, to um, share exactly what their wins, what their lessons have been throughout their, their journey as well so that we can learn from them. And then based on the industry that they're in, their expertise, they share their advice, um, their knowledge with us so that we can apply it into our lives and in our businesses. Um, so that's a huge element of that. Um, right now I am relaunching the podcast coming up soon. So two more episodes are lined up for it, which I'm super excited about, um, which will continue that, um, but also then intertwine some solo shows where you can have some one-on-one -on -one time with me sharing my own expertise as well. Nice. Great. Yeah, some great topics on there. Um, I've listened to about a dozen of them didn't, <laughs> doing my homework before um, you coming on. And, and I love the content and I love the guests that are coming on. They're, they're super experienced and uh, have great, some, some great takeaways from, from the show. So thank you so much for putting that out there. Um, I want to give have some takeaways for some of our listeners here about systems and processes and we've been talking about um, a lot of the struggles that our agents are having in the business um, I want to have them take away some ideas or platforms that they should be incorporating into their business so maybe kind of give us your top 10 that you feel um, agents would benefit from by adding it into their company and also it can be tech related it, it doesn't need to be uh, it could be non-tech related but mm -hmm. what are some things that they can add into their business so that they can focus on more income generating um, activities to grow their revenues absolutely i'll share um i'll share 10 <laughs> but i just want to point out that you don't need to implement all of them Right? There are some core fundamental systems that you should implement for sure, but keep it simple. Right, your, busy, your business doesn't have to be complex. You don't have to create very complex business systems and processes um, to support you in a way that's going to feel good and it's going to make it easier for you to serve your clients. So I can recommend, recommend a whole list of um, systems and tech tools for you, but just kind of break it down to what you actually need and what you need to start off with. And then once you get comfortable with that, then you can add on more layers. I'm glad so. you mentioned that we don't have to add all of them because it can be really overwhelming learning mm -hmm. how to use these apps or soft online software systems. And, and even it sometimes is a headache just to try to, to set up that organizational um, ladder, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, let's start with the first one. Okay. So I would highly recommend a CRM, so a client relationship management system. Um, a lot of brokerages have systems in place, but you want to make sure that you are using a system that you enjoy. If you don't enjoy the system, if it's not meeting your needs that you need in your business as you run and serve your clients, then there's no point of having it in place, right? So what I highly recommend is Pipedrive just from my own experience and seeing other people use it in the sales industry as well. There are other platforms available for real estate agents and I'm not knocking them. Um, I have seen some and some of them are more complicated than it needs to be. Um, I prefer to keep it super simple and to be more visually appealing um, and easy for you to see where things are at with your clients. Um, I just find that it makes it easier for agents to adapt to when it's easy to use. 
Um, so PipeDrive is definitely my top recommendation for a CRM platform because it's not just a client database, it holds your process. So that's my next <laughs> non-tech tool related item that you should also map out is your client experience journey from the time that they contact you as a new lead, what does that experience look like? So what are all the touch points, all the activities that you need to do, the emails, the the tasks, the, maybe the marketing collateral, all those types of things, you wanna map out exactly what that experience is. Once they have a consultation with you, then you wanna map out exactly what that experience is going to be like, whether they are a seller or a buyer. So from the point that they sign the documents or a buyer, they can bypass signing that disclosure document, which I've seen a lot of people do bypass. Um, from the point that they actually sign those documents all the way to offboarding them as a client, what are all those touch points? What is exactly that you need to do throughout that client experience journey? So I would map that out and Pipedrive is able to support workflows. So we can map out every single task, every email, everything that you need to do and create workflows that is going to keep you on track with every client that you create in that system. Would you happen to know Pipedrive if they also support like a website on the front end? Because I often find there are CRMs, they're really good at CRMs, but then they don't, they don't um, support or host like a, a website where leads can come into the, the web, into the CRM, or there's, it's a really good website, but then that company doesn't have a CRM on the back end. So it's really hard to try to fit two into one. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't support a website on the front end for you, but what it can do is create web forms that you can then link to like your actual website. So you can have a button like contact me or book an appointment or book a consultation. And from there, they complete the web form, which you customize as to exactly what information you want to collect at that point. That then gets created as a new deal in PipeDrive. And then from there, that triggers the process to begin for you to act on that new lead. So then from there, PipeDrive also has a scheduler link built in, which is connected to your online calendar um, for the um, the, the lead to then book a consultation. So in all of your touch points throughout your lead um, experience, you want to include a call to action for them to book a consultation with you, to remind them that you're available, to meet with them to further discuss their questions in person, to go through the buying or selling process, what they are to expect and whatnot. Um, so you have that built in which they can automatically just click, select a date and time that works for them based on your availability. Um, you can also create all of your email templates, which makes it super easy for you to just select the email template based on the prompted activity telling you to send X email, modify it if you need to, and send. Um, and then you can also, once you are comfortable with the system, you can automate emails to automatically get sent throughout the process. Um, so there's so much functionalities in Pipedrive that will support you from a to Z in your client experience, but also in your business. It helps you because of the pipeline view. You have all of the different stages for leads, buyers, and sellers identified in a pipeline view where you can see all of your clients and your deals underneath the stages so that you can visually see, I have six clients currently in the completion stage, or I have five leads that are currently in the follow-up stage and whatnot. So it makes it really easy for you to see what's going on at a first glance in your business. You can also create um, goals and um, dashboards that kind of identify where you're at in your business based on the goals that you've identified for the year, where kind of all of your, your leads are coming from, what sources. So it helps you really analyze your business so that you can then create the strategies to, to reprioritize where you need to focus. Sounds like you really know this CRM really, really well. And yeah. uh, it sounds also like you've had agents sign up on this and you've taught them how to set up their workflow charts. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. you've uh, mentioned one and two, and how about the third platform or tool that um, an agent should integrate into their business? So the next one that I would recommend is a project management tool. And 
This is very important because you are not just a real estate agent, a realtor. You are a business owner, which means that you need to work on your business as well as in your business serving your clients. You need to set time aside weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever works best for you to focus on creating the strategies, planning your goals, creating the plans that are going to implement those strategies that you've identified. Um, and ClickUp is your project management tool that's going to help you do that, to help facilitate you creating the strategies and implementing them in your business. It's also a good team hub. So once you are ready to expand your team, um, you would have a whole team section in there that gives them all the resources, the hiring templates, the onboarding templates and workflows that they need to go through once you bring them on. Um, there's just so much, it becomes like a team hub, a business hub where everything that's not client related lives. This is your business information. So I highly recommend creating ClickUp um, to help you focus on your business. The next thing that you can then do is in, implement things that are going to support your marketing initiatives like Planoly or any kind of social media scheduler application. There's so many out there like Tailwind, Plan, Later. Um, they basically all do very similar things. I prefer Planoly, but there's no right or wrong really. Um, so what that helps you with is planning out your posts. So whether they are new listings, um, whether they're educational tips, client love posts, anything like that to help build your community, help showcase your expertise, build authority and whatnot. Um, that's going to help you plan it and then you can auto schedule it so that you don't have to sit there and click um, schedule or post. It just automatically does it based on the day that you want to do that so you can batch work all of your marketing initiatives and then plan it to be scheduled throughout the, the week or the month. And it's called Planner? Planally. Plan Planally. How do you spell that? P-L-A-N-O-L-Y. Planally. Planally. Okay. Okay, that sounds like a really good tool. Another one would be Canva, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. That's the free version. <laughs> it's an incredible tool. If you are not a graphic designer, I tell you, like, it's the easiest one to use. Um, basically, it helps so you create all of your marketing templates. So whether it's um, client collaterals like checklists or your buyer's guide or anything like that, um, it helps you create those as well as your social media templates where I ho wholeheartedly suggest that you create plug and play templates for everything that you use. So identify the main things that you, you use in marketing initiatives in your business like, um, like stats, monthly um, update stats or monthly market updates, things like that, um, your checklist, your buyer's guide. Um, listing templates for social media, whether it's stories or Instagram posts, create templates that you can just drag and drop into the images or you can change the, da the data, like number of bedrooms and listing price, all that type of stuff. So it's there for you to use and it's very easy for you to just plug in the right information and then send type or post type things. So you don't have to start from scratch. That is the one thing that you should never have to do in your business or very rarely do is start from scratch. Right. Right. Yeah. And I remember using um, the my vision board, my template from the from my vision board is actually from Canva. And I heard that uh, it was created by a female entrepreneur. She's like a billionaire, billionaire now uh, once she created the, the Canva um, tool. So mm -hmm. a wonderful, wonderful tool. I definitely recommend that as well myself. Yeah, and you can create your brand kit in there as well. So if you do have the paid version, you can upload your color codes that you use in your business, your logos, um, you can upload the fonts that you use as well. So I highly suggest creating a brand guide if you haven't already that allows you to be consistent with the look and feel and style of your brand online. Um, but you can upload all those elements so that when you are creating designs or editing them, you have easy access to them to make sure that everything is consistent across the board. You can also organize all of your posts, like your designs, into different folders. So you can be like, these are my listing templates and create different options so that you can kind of alternate between them. Um, and then using like stock images, source stock images online. 
um, that you can use in your business as well that are aligned with the style of your brand identity. And you can create a folder there that you can house all of your stock images there so that it's easy for you to use when you're creating your design. So there's just so much that you can do in that platform to make sure that your marketing initiatives are very consistent um, across all media channels. Mm -hmm. And and I think the the main point is really user friendly, oh, so goodness. yeah, it's that's an amazing tool for sure. Um, yeah, so what's next? This is this um, is uh, it seems overwhelming, but so far everything that you've named um, seems pretty easy to integrate into the business. Absolutely. Um, another one that I would do if you're ready to take it to the next level is Zapier. So Zapier will connect so many different ta um, tech tools together. So for example, if I wanted to, for some reason, let's just use Google Sheets. I have a Google Sheet tracking sheet for something that I wanted to add deals from Pipedrive that I've won, I can create a zap that will automatically move that information into that Google Sheet as a new entry. So there's so many like admin tasks. So when you map out your processes, your client experience, what you do in your business, you can identify what you can automate. What admin tasks can you actually automate? So, and what's really good is with Zapier, you can easily, like if you don't really know kind of what you, you can do or you have ideas, what you can do is log into their website, select the platform that you're thinking to start with. So like say Pipedrive, I wanna do something with Pipedrive and connect it to my Google Sheets, but I'm not quite sure exactly what I can possibly do with that to automate some things. Um, you can then select the next tech tool that you want to connect it to, and it will give you all of the different kind of options that you have that you can trigger um, between the two platforms, which is really, really good. It gives you ideas as to what's possible. But you really want to automate a lot of your admin work, right? Take that off your plate. You don't want to be spending your time on admin work that's not generating money for you. You want to be out there with clients. You want to be taking on more clients and really serving them so that they share your name. They either become repeat business or they like share referrals. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the tips we, we're always been told is if you can write it on a list and hand it to someone to do it, then it's something that you can automate. And so it sounds like these are simple, super simple things that can be written out, these checklists, and maybe typed into or put into this workflow that you're, that you're mentioning. Um, and then for another one, I would probably, I mean, you should be using email. <laughs> so I hope that you have an online system like Gmail or whatnot that has an online calendar, um, but definitely do not be doing this um, manually. If you are currently, it's time to upgrade. Um, if you're not using a CRM with a built-in scheduler, I would definitely recommend getting a scheduler. Calendly is free. Um, you can set your availability and you can then include that in your emails um, when you're connecting with leads and whatnot for them to book a consultation um, with you. Um, another one I would say is if you're wanting to take your newsletter or your marketing initiatives um, when it comes to emailing your subscribers or your client list and you want to take that to another level, you can implement BombBomb, Bomb, which is like a video email platform. Um, so it adds a personal element to your emails because you can do like a video introduction, you can walk through things like the market update stats and whatnot, and then have the information below. But it allows people, especially today with everything virtual and everyone feeling very disconnected, it allows people to connect with you to some degree, seeing your face and hearing how you talk and how you hold yourself and how you, you share information with them and whatnot. So, that is another way that you can elevate that experience for your subscribers or your email list. I've always, yeah, I've always wondered, the, uh, I've never used BombBomb Bomb myself, but what's the difference between using BombBomb Bomb versus, let's just say, just using my phone and video recording using the video, like the, the camera app? So is the quality, is the quality different or are there subtitles? What, what's the difference between like just using my phone versus subscribing to BombBomb? Bomb? It's more of like a formal kind of email. Um, the way that it's built, it's 
is just a more formal approach to that. You can definitely get around it by doing a video recording with your phone, adding that and, or embedding it into your email. Um, it's just a different platform to make it a lot easier um, and more visually appealing. So on BombBomb, you have to enter their email address and then upload your video and then they'll, they'll have a full format. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. But how does that integrate? Let's just say now we're using PipeDrive, the CRM that sends out emails. Now you have two separate um, softwares or, or online platforms sending out emails. How do you track a BombBomb email into the CRM? So the bomb bomb I would probably use for your newsletter subscribers, whereas PipeDrive, you're using that for communicating with your clients or your past client nurture pro um, program or lead client nurturing. So it's like active clients more so and then subscribers who may not even be clients, they just want information from you type thing on your newsletter. So it's just a, a different communication. Um, another one is if you are ready to build your team or if you already have a team, I highly recommend Slack as a team communication tool. Um, it's probably one of the better ones that I've used. I've used Teams, um, there's just so many out there, but I find that it's the more user-friendly one. It's easier to organize information. So what I do is you have channels that you can create in Slack and you can set topics to each of those channels. So you can have like an industry updates. You can have um, informational about like certain municipalities. You can have information about educational courses coming up that you want your team to register for. So you can segregate the different types of info that you are communicating with your team. You can also have like a celebration channel where when you win a deal in PipeDrive, so you've marked it as one because it's the possession date, that will send a notification to Slack so that you and your team can then celebrate together and be like, yes, we closed a deal. That's awesome. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you can um, actually direct message somebody as well that's part of that mm -hmm. chat as well. Yeah. Exactly. So you can do DMs, um, private channels. You can direct message someone within a channel that has other people and direct the message directly to them. You can do video calls as a team or individually. You can do huddles, which is just minus video. It's more just talking. You can do voice notes to them instead of typing out messages. Um, you can do polls. You can do like reminders in there. Like there's just so much. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that it did all that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we've done 10. I, I actually lost track because um, <laughs> these well, are all such good track. tips. <laughs> um, I'll share one more. Um, yes, Wave is another one that I use in my business that might be applicable to a real estate business. Um, especially if you have a podcast, it's a great one where you can create graphics for your social media and then add like the way or the voice kind of wave where it shows like someone talking type thing with an audio clip on it. You can also add captions, um, but it just kind of elevates a graphic and it adds the audio element to it. So for example, with a podcast, I would do one where I create a snippet of our episode. Um, I upload it to my graphic with the actual wave element that shows the person talking, but they get a little sneak peek of what that episode is all about. You can also do that with a listing. So you can give like a very brief kind of engaging description of the property, um, attach that to an image or um, a video option of the property itself and kind of talk through it as well. So it just adds a different type of interaction um, with your community. So these all sound so awesome and it sounds like I need to get on at least 80% um, of the ones that you just mentioned because I'm on none of those. Um, <laughs> But it also is overwhelming. I can just see someone who just started in the business or maybe they're not tech savvy and they're really overwhelmed with all this information and um, they're like, should I be hiring an assistant or should I be hiring Jessica? So how do you come in to play with it, all this? Like, do you are you helping them set up the system? We're going to talk about some of your offerings and services, but um, where how do they, when they're hiring you, um, where, how do you come in and like help them incorporate all of this? Okay. Um, so before I start there with the overwhelm, 
Forget everything we just talked about, stick to a CRM, and stick to the client experience journey, creating your email templates and your templates for marketing collaterals and whatnot. Just focus on that, forget everything else. Because it's, I find the biggest struggle for people moving to this type of a new process, um, especially when they're so used to doing things manually or in a different way, is changing the habit, getting used to a different habit. And the more complex you make it, the less likely you're going to stick with it, right? So keep it super simple, stick with the CRM, create the process, get used to that, get really comfortable, create the habits of updating it every day, set time aside to work on your, your business and making sure that your CRM is up to date. Um, get used to that habit, make sure that it's firm and it's a non-negotiable for you every day. Um, and then you can start looking at different stuff. Um, but when it comes to bringing on a team member, whether it's me, whether it's an assistant or whatnot, um, I personally <laughs> recommend getting your stuff together before you expand your team. You don't want to add a team member, an assistant to help you when you're already disorganized, when everything's already um, a mess, because it's gonna take more time away from you to manage them when nothing is clearly outlined as to how they need to do their job, right? So what I would highly recommend is before you expand your team, um, you take that time to really document exactly how you want your clients served, what that process looks like, um, and implement the system to support it so that then you can easily delegate to whoever you bring on um, without having the stress and the worry that things are going to fall through the cracks on not just you, but on them as well. I appreciate you reminding us of this because most often an agent will rely, like bring somebody on, relying on that person to fix those issues and add a system when they don't really know what they need to to do. So I can understand what you mean by having that system. And, I, and I'm trying to go back to when I started in the business, maybe I wasn't I wasn't ready to bring that team member on and it didn't last too long because I didn't have the proper tools for that person to be successful. So I, I definitely hear what you're saying. So yeah. when you are, when someone re retains your services, um, what does that onboarding experience look like um, so that you know how to get started with them? Okay, um, so with that, you don't have to do it all by yourself. You can hire someone to help you, whether it's me or another OBM or anything like that. Um, just get the help. You don't have to do it alone. Um, for me, what I do when I get clients is we go through an onboarding experience where you fill out a client application so I can understand where you're at in your business, what you're struggling with, what you want to focus on, what is your mission, what are your goals for the next six months or your long-term vision goals, so that we can make sure that we also tackle that in the 90-day partnership that we're going to have together. Um, so from there, we have a kickoff call to kind of go through exactly what they've filled out in their client application, make sure we're all on the same page. I give them a rundown as to exactly what they are to expect from me. Um, leading up to the 90 day kickoff um, and what that relationship is going to look like throughout the 90 days. And then we get started on creating the roadmap, exactly what the 90 days is going to consist of using ClickUp. So they get, before I implement for them, they get kind of like a sneak peek because they're going to be using my ClickUp to manage their 90 day plan as well. So we're going to be in there together. They're gonna to get their hands in there and then it's going to help them get a little bit more used to ClickUp when it's time to implement it for them. Um, so we identify exactly by month, exactly what we're going to be focusing on. And then from there we work together. So we have weekly meetings where we either work through processes, um, but we basically follow the 90 day plan to make sure that we are hitting everything that we've identified and staying on track. So Jessica, I want to be clear that it's not you coming in and setting everything up. The agent as well has to do their homework to set up their business properly. You're providing that workflow and the step-by-steps, but they actually need to do the work because it's ultimately, this is the whole point of working on their business. 
correct? Yeah. Yeah, so I have two services, which I'll recap later on as well. So there is the pipe drive CRM setup with just an industry standard process, because generally when you take away all of the customized kind of lead um, touches and whatnot, the standard tasks are pretty much the same across the board for everybody, right? You kind of have to go through the same things. Um, so we, we can implement an industry standard kind of workflow um, in PipeDrive for you. And then from there, I identify exactly what email templates you need to create to make that process easier for you. And that's where you will create your email templates and I will review and refine them for you. But it needs to come from you because it's your voice, it's how you're communicating with your clients. Everybody is different in that regard with how deep they go into the details that they provide, um, exactly how they communicate, like how they say, hi, John, like everyone is very different. So I want it to come from your voice and then I'll just help you refine it. With the business systemization, um, then we fully customize it. So we have kind of the base industry standard process that we follow, but then we customize it based on all the different touch points that you want to add to elevate your client experience and to make it really your own. And then from there, we identify email templates, marketing collateral, all that type of stuff that we need to create and they help support the creation of the content. And then I review, refine, and I create the designs with their approval, of course. Okay. And so that's just the one program, the, the first offering that you have. What is that, what is that package called? Uh, so there's the business systemization, which is the custom experience. Um, so that's customized to their business. Um, that one is a little bit different than the CRM setup only. So that one is a three month partnership versus the CRM is a shorter time frame where it's, let's just get your CRM up and running. Let's get you using it. Let's get you comfortable with it. And then if you're ready and you want to elevate that client experience and really make it your own, then we can do the business systemization. Mm. Uh, I, I noticed that you said partnership, which is fantastic because when you're maybe mentioning OBM or online business manager, it's like, oh my God, I got so much work and I got someone on my back trying to make me accountable. But when you actually deliver it as a partnership, it sounds like you really want this agent to be super successful and you're really along their side to watch them grow their business. Um, that just sounds fantastic. So it's already those two sound great. Um, any other offerings and, and um, you want to share with us? Uh, so you can start off if you're not sure exactly what you need to do, you're feeling a little bit lost in your business or you're brand new to the industry and you just don't even know where to start. Um, I do have the clarity and strategy session, which is 90 minutes with me where you can pick my brains. We can create an action plan, um, a 90 day action plan for you to then execute on your own, but I'm your account accountability partner. And then you get access to me for two weeks through Slack where you can ask questions, get me to review stuff, um, anything back and forth like that to make sure that you feel supported for those two weeks. And then I will check in with you midway through. Um, to see how you're doing. Are you still staying on top of things? Are you tackling your list? Um, give you some encouragement. Again, go through any questions, any roadblocks that you're experiencing to make sure that you're still moving forward. So that's to get you kind of just started if you're not sure exactly what you need to do. Um, and you want some clarity, you want to map out exactly what you need to focus on. And then from there, it's the pipe drive setup, which is just industry standard. Then we have the business systemization, which is the customized systemization of their business, which is not just their CRM. We go into the marketing, we go into the branding, we go into the identity, the messaging that they deliver to their clients, um, website. There's just so much more included in that. Um, their online filing organization, everything is included in that package. And then depending on that relationship, um, if it's suited, they have the option to then move into OBM retainer, which is basically having me as their right hand, like they've had all along, um, where I am their strategic partner. I am helping them focus on their business. I'm helping manage their team. I'm making sure things are getting done in their business. I'm giving them the metrics, the KPIs to help them analyze their business. So I'm basically their business manager, helping them kind of manage and focus on what they need to focus on. You really have to like each other and be best friends for the first Which is little why while. 
I recommend starting with business systemization because it's not just me. I am picky with who I choose to work with because I am very hands-on and I, I, I deliver, I like to deliver a white glove experience, making sure that they feel fully supported at any time throughout the day, the weekend and whatnot. Um, I really want to make sure that they have that, that support that entrepreneurs need, especially when implementing new systems. You don't want to be sending a message to someone and then getting a reply three days later. You, you need help, right, right away. So I'm very picky with who I choose to work with because I want to make sure that it's the right fit. But I also think that they need to be picky as well because they're inviting somebody to be their strategic right hand in their own business. They want to make sure that I'm the right fit for them as well. So I think the three month partnership is a great start, the business systemization to make sure that on both ends, we enjoy working together. I'm delivering exactly what they need, um, that they feel fully supported. They feel like I fully understand their business. They trust me with it. Um, and then from there, we can determine if it's the right move to move forward. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned you have a full-time corporate job, and then this is kind of your passion projects, and you're super picky on who you take on. What does the hours look like? Like, how often are you guys touching base? You mentioned Slack. Um, are most of your meetings like in person or online, or are they are they um, in the evenings when you're when you're more free? So, can, how does that schedule look like? Um, so they can basically touch base with me through Slack any points throughout the day. Um, generally, I will log off at about 9 o'clock, <laughs> um, so they will get a reply after that. Um, but when it comes to scheduled meetings, it's one hour a week, um, but we touch base throughout the week um, at any point that they need it. So I usually check in maybe two every two days or three days to see how they're doing if I haven't heard from them, um, but they can touch base with me at any point. And if we need to, we have like one-off video calls through through Slack to talk through things um, to make sure. Sometimes you just need to kind of localize stuff and kind of talk through it um, to be able to move forward. So I just want to make sure that they have that support in order to be able to get through any roadblocks that they experience. Um, it is a juggle with the corporate job, so I obviously make sure that it's not interfering with that, um, but so far it hasn't. Mm -hmm. And you have an additional offering, how to launch a podcast. We actually had a couple guests on where they've actually started their own podcast as well. So we're super excited um, that they were able to be kind of involved in the whole process of building their podcast. But you also have your own uh, Love Unplugged. Um, and I'm just wondering if you have a lot of interested people like joining um wanting to start it and and if they've been successful using your program yeah i've had people um go through that and set up their podcasts um it's not just how to set up your systems like or not systems but like get your podcast published on itunes and spotify and whatnot it also goes into creating the right graphics creating your process as to exactly what you need to do to publish an episode so um, tracking all of your guest invitations. Did they reply? Did they not reply? Creating the email templates, your pitch templates. Um, when a guest gets confirmed, you know, what do you do then? You send them a calendar invite. I provide like a terms and conditions or a feature agreement that outlines exactly what that guest is going to receive when they're, when you're promoting their episodes. So exactly giving them everything that the guest needs to know um, when they are featured on your podcast and they are kept up to date throughout the entire process until their podcast um, episode has been launched. Oh, sounds like we need to sign up with your program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's, it's a more detailed approach in that regard because I add more of the systemization elements to it and I provide email templates that you can use as well. Mm, nice. Um, so I'm going to wrap up. We're almost uh, at the hour here. It's gone by so fast. Some great tips you've given us. But I always like to wrap up our uh, episode with five rapid fire questions. And I'm just wondering if you'd be interested in participating in that. No, no, just joking. <laughs> you have no choice. You're still, I'm you're stuck with me right now. <laughs> they're easy and they're okay. fun. Okay. Number one, how would you describe yourself in three words? Monica Geller. I love that. Okay. Um, you have the same hair as her too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say 
cuddly. <laughs> I've been known for that. Um, and I would probably say like very driven. Mm. Yeah. Lovely. I love those descriptions. <laughs> uh, who or what is your biggest inspiration in life? My biggest inspiration is just to create a life that gives me freedom um, to be able to enjoy life, um, but also be able to have a business that I'm super passionate about that kind of, I get really excited about waking up every day to work with my clients and whatnot. Um, but yeah, just creating that, that life that kind of balances both, um, but that I get really excited about. Awesome. What is your superpower? I would probably say being invisible. To go wherever I want, be anywhere I want without people knowing. We were talking about superpowers on in one of the episodes last year, and we were talking about whoever mentions they want to be invisible as their superpower likes to work behind the scenes, loves <laughs> to manage and organize. And I think you, 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 you know what your calling is here. I definitely prefer being behind the scenes, working away. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> um, uh, what do you look forward to the most in 2022? Mm, okay. I mean, there's so much. So rebrand, launching a new course, um, hopefully some kind of vacation permitted um, safely. That would be really, really great. Um, COVID ending permanently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty much just focusing on my business, just seeing that flourish um, and hopefully getting some more time to, to travel a little bit, um, whether it's staying local or not, but just spending more time outdoors and doing things this year. I'm going to add another question before my last one. So you mentioned you're re, you're pivoting your business and perhaps rebranding and adding a course. So, are, do you mind sharing a little bit of that with us? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I do have big goals for my business, of course. So I have the agency side serving clients, but I also want to launch um, another side is the educational platform. So that's where I'm going to be creating courses and resources and tools and whatnot and able to, in order to share that with individuals. Um, the very first one is a course and it's like a three prong approach um, where you can bundle it together based on where you're at or choose the course that um, meets you exactly where you're at in your business. So the first course is giving you the foundations for your business. So if you haven't started a business yet or if you have and you're starting a second business or a second division and things just did not go well the first time and you really just want the support to be able to make it a little bit more streamlined this time, um, it helps you determine what your zone of genius is, determine ideas for your, your business, like core ideas for your business, what business model you should be implementing, um, the registration, the legalities, the contracts, insurance, um, brainstorming your business name, all those types of elements. Um, getting the other foundational elements, so determining your product suite, the pricing that you should be charging, um, your goals, um, the tech tools, so very um, the, the foundational tech tools that you should be implementing, um, your marketing initiatives and whatnot, and then from there launching your website as well and launching your business. So it's kind of like a very streamlined approach to getting your business launched. And then the second one is now that you have a business going, let's get you systematized. Let's create the system so that you can then scale and grow your team sustainably. So that's where we dive into your, your actual SOPs, your templates, your automations, workflows, um, getting more into your marketing um, strategies. So identifying your, your key messaging, your brand identity and whatnot, maybe updating your website to reflect that. Um, but it's really just about getting you ready to take your business to the next level. And then the third one would be for a CEO who is now ready to take that next leap and it provides them with all the tools that they need to become the visionary in their business, to expand their team by hiring the templates, 
um, the onboarding, all that type of stuff, how to manage the team. It gives them all of the tools that they need in order to be that business owner. Exciting. Wow. Can't wait for this to unfold. And when is this um, going to be available? Um, I don't want to jinx myself, <laughs> uh, but maybe April, May. Okay. So second quarter. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing that. Um, if the, Not to make you point out any favorite guest on your podcast, but if there was one episode our listeners should tune into on Love Unplugged, which one should it be? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so sorry to make you do this, but I would, I would love to know which one you think would be the most applicable to our, to our listeners. I'm obsessed with Hannah Nieves, so... There is one episode on there with her. She's also coming back. So the next episode that's going to be launching in February will be another one with her part two. But she is a brilliant marketing expert. Like, I just, yeah, I can't say enough good things about about Hannah. She also has um, experience in the commercial real estate as well. So she has a lot of a lot of knowledge and expertise to share. Another one I would say is Melania Saranac. She is a fantastic sales coach. Um, oh, there's just so many. <laughs> I feel like I'm leaving them all out. And if you guys have not have not subscribed to her, again, her podcast is called Love Unplugged. Um, so many great episodes and guests on there. And um, where can our listeners find you besides your podcast? Uh, so you can follow me on social media. So Instagram is where I prefer to be. Um, so you can follow me there at Project Love Co. There's my website, um, www.projectloveco.com. Um, and then the podcast you can find on Spotify, iTunes, um, Amazon Music, I think, all the, the major channels for podcasts. But that's pretty much where you can find me. Well, thank you so much. Um, it was such a pleasure getting to know you and I hope we can have you back on sometime in the future in person because I know that we're going to get a lot of questions about some of the platforms you recommended and um, perhaps even just touching base with other things that you're such a you're you're great at so and I and maybe even just chatting about your new program that you're going to offer in the second quarter of the year so that'll be awesome so thank you so much for coming on thank you for inviting me